Fresh talk to him. This is Spec Weekly. I'm Cutcraft, delivering your dose of iota hopium. Don't have the time for Discord? Oh, you're too good for us, mother. Don't worry, I got you covered. Join me as we take a look at what happened last week. No, ladies and gentlemen, not ensure sex, you dirty little boys and girls. It's ensure sec. But what is this ensure sec? Well, the TLDR says that the project is to safeguard the EU's digital single markets e-commerce ecosystem. And again, I must ask, what the f what does it mean? What does that mean? Let's see what the InsureSec official site has to say. InsureSec addresses the whole gamut of modern e-commerce. <laughs> From standard physical products purchased online and delivered via post, to entirely virtual products or services delivered online, it addresses threats ranging from maliciously modifying web e-commerce applications or rendering them unavailable to legitimate customers, to delivery issues or fraud committed by insiders or customers. It achieves this by focusing on the common software and physical sensor interfaces that sit along the e-commerce payment and delivery ecosystem. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to translate it. We have a tool here that is applied to anything you can purchase online, whether it's a product or digital subscription. Think something like Netflix maybe. But I'm having a bit of trouble here because what they're saying is pretty broad in that any threats that attack online platforms where hackers might compromise user data. <laughs> Speaking of which, an example is uh, with Ledger getting hacked for customer details. A physical product designed to stop you getting hacked got hacked. Well, the, plat the digital platform did anyway. Is that ironic? Maybe, I don't know. But back to the point, any threat related to something you purchase or subscribe to online, physical or digital, is somehow nullified by what InsureSec has done. Sounds interesting. Let's go a little further down. Ah yes, here it is. Brace yourselves for the corporate talk. Although InsureSec innovations are applicable to any critical infrastructure that relies and is monitored by network software systems, its design and integration philosophy make it uniquely prepared to protect distributed and evolving e-commerce infrastructures with its various forms of payment and delivery. <laughs> well, I got nothing from that. I wonder if there's any detail in this project information link. Let's click it. Oh, fucking wonderful. An EU website. I bet this is somehow related to EBSI. And if it's not, It'll integrate, I reckon. Holy shit, look at that funding. 9 million euro for just under two years of effort. 7 million coming from the EU. Not bad, guys. Well, I guess it's echoing what we've just covered. Uh, the project will address threats ranging from malicious modifications of web e-commerce applications to delivery issues or fraud committed by insiders or customers. But this part right here, the InsureSec project will improve the EU's vision of a reliable and trusted digital single market. A single market. This ties in with the goals of the EBSI, where a DLT solution is used as the single point of verification with data that comes from various sources. Yeah, the dots are connecting for me. Okay, now I saw this Twitter post from Schmucklos. I'm sure that's how you say it. And it is a link to a video with Michele Nati. And Michele goes through the InsureSec solution. He is the product lead on the work that the IOTA Foundation has done with InsureSec. The video he posted gives some detail on how it's done. Here's some of his insight on the project from the perspective of Keixa Bank. Keixa Bank. <laughs> Sounds Basque. In Cashabank, we foresee sovereign identities as an empowerment to our clients, giving them the control of whom is accessing their personal data. 
Uh, it provides trust and transparency between our customers and our entity, which are key features in our business. If we see it from a security perspective, it is also very interesting because uh, decentralized identities can increase the security while reducing the friction with our customers. Customer experience is not only in the banks, uh, it's a cross-sectoral key driver. And um, digital identities can speed up some processes involving other stakeholders like e-commerce purchases, uh, customer onboarding, and reducing the usage of usernames and passwords, which means an increase in security. And it's not the only benefit for us because uh, we are part of a highly regulated sector. Uh, in financial services, uh, compliance is a must, and we need to keep track of the updated data of our customers. And decentralized identities can provide a secured and single connection to our customers to keep all this data updated. I knew it. It's Digital Identities at it again. Flashback, episode 14, Spec Weekly. We'd expect the holder to go through a number of verifications where he is issued verifiable data from many issuers. This data accumulates for the holder and it builds a set of identity credentials that he controls within his wallet. Each time he's issued a credential, it gets collected and becomes reusable in his catalog of verifiable identity data. Meaning that over time, he can with ease provide bare minimum data to confirm he qualifies for the product or service provided by a verifier. Let's look at an example of this bare minimum validation where a guy uses his SSI data to sign up to a public service where he must verify he's over 18 and a citizen within his country. Over time, he has collected credentials from his driver's license, his passport, his Medicare ID, his bank account, his credit card, and his birth certificate. The verifier only accepts credentials from government bodies. So data that verifies the holder's age can't be taken from the credit card and the bank account doesn't validate his age anyway. These credentials don't indicate citizenship either, so bank and credit card details are useless here. Which leaves us with three other credentials the holder has accumulated over time. And here's what's cool. He doesn't have to share all credential data and details to a verifier. All the verifier has to know is, is this person over 18? And is this person an Australian citizen? The wallet holding the credentials replies to the verifier with, yes to the qualifying questions. The verifier now has the data they need in order to grant this person access to the public service he needs. So the nice thing is these credentials are stored as private keys in his wallet, meaning he doesn't have to keep going back to the issuer to collect the credentials over and over and over, as he can just use what he has already been issued to his wallet, so long as the data remains valid. Okay, now to a demo. In the demo, we assume a customer has set up his digital identity wallet. Let's imagine he has gathered from his bank verifiable data that proves his age and identity and stored all of that as verifiable credentials in his digital identity wallet. This digital identity wallet is something that our beloved Yele Milena is developing with his company, Impiers. But more on that in a future episode. So, the customer wants to get crunk. He must celebrate the launch of Shimmer and he's now gonna get fucking smashed. This customer goes to an online shop that sells alcohol and selects his choice of happy juice. Picking out a bottle of wine. This dude is a lightweight. If it was fucking me, mate, I would've got that bottle of bourbon and a two liter Coke and a pack of smokes and just quietly put a few snags on the barbie and caught it a day, you dickhead. So in our current world of Web2, uh, we get to the cart and we're used to filling in our name, address and credit card details. But in this brave new world of digital identity, in this up and coming Web3 revolution, we can store our identity and payment details in our own digital identity wallet. Then create a profile with data that doesn't have to be shared with an online merchant. But during this process, we can click on a single button to complete our transaction, where the data that's stored within our wallet is used to populate all the information for the purchase. Amazing. Well, that's my son. 
<laughs> That's my assumption. I don't know about the address part, but the verifiable credential part certainly is a thing. Uh, and that's why I did the little flashback, just to let you know that data can be aggregated in your digital identity wallet, then provide a yes or no, or a true or false condition, and just feed that back through to the merchant. So the merchant needs to know you're 18, your wallet says, true, this person is over 18. Anyway, back to the InsureSec blog from IOTA, to touch on why we need a DLT for this. It becomes clear that a distributed ledger can guarantee the immutability of shared information, while decentralized identities can identify and verify both the source generating the data and the tool that processes it. While the first property guarantees data integrity, the second allows us to manage access control from the right tool to the right data sources, thus preventing relay and replay attacks. Relay attacks? Was is das? In a classic man-in-the-middle attack, an attacker intercepts and manipulates communications between two parties, initiated by one of the parties. Does that sound familiar, guys? Trauma. Okay, let's wrap it up. Today's a quick one. Speculation. Could it be that we will see an EBSI solution built with the IOTA technology stack? where EBSI conformant identity wallets are used to store verifiable credentials that build a person's digital identity? And is it possible that we will see the same wallets also hold payment options where online buying is streamlined by incorporating the InsureSec solution? And as dystopian as it might sound, can we say maybe that one day this will all be tied together with a digital euro? A digital euro that runs on a scalable, efficient, green, and sexy little DLT that we have all become intimately familiar with. Hmm? Maybe. Guys, I just want to do a quick nibble check with you all. How are they doing? Are you guys soft? Hmm? Or hard? Like a pair of 24 karat diamond little, little naughty boys. I think we get shimmer within seven days. I can feel it. Look, last time I said this, I said we get shimmer within a month and it's been about seven weeks, but this time it's different. We're on the cusp of greatness, but this, my friends, is just the beginning. This is where I think the real work starts. This is where the real adoption starts to happen. It's not gonna be easy, but it's gonna be awesome. And I've seen a lot of FUD lately, and that's usually a good sign. But I want you to picture yourself in six years. Really try to project an image of that person. Your gamble on IOTA has paid off. You don't have to worry about money anymore. And you're operating on the highest tiers of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And you think about the hard days of today, 2022, 2023. The waiting, the stress of the bear markets. How will you be remembered? In any case, one thing we should all remember is $4 EOI. See you next time.